I, I think there is something really exciting about uh, small projects, which when we look at uh, 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 fantastic architects, you know, the great architects, and look at their work through time, it's frequently smaller projects or earlier projects that seem to have a kind of concentrated essence of their work. I think a huge amount is translatable of what you do on a smaller project, taking them up to more commercial scale, um, larger scale projects. Uh, they're all the same principles of building, of, of bringing materials together uh, and sculpturally how you're drawing light into spaces, how you're controlling spaces. I think it's all completely transferable and um, valuable to to have an opportunity to, to test those ideas out on a smaller scale in a quieter way, but build the confidence to then use them on larger scale projects. When budget is tight, you have to be really clever and ingenious in order to, to work with what you've got. And I think there's, that, I always think that projects that really have an economy of means are exciting and successful and so I think there is, I think very often small projects are very ingenious because people are, are being, well they're having to work under really tight constraints which, which bring out ingenuity and bring out um, inventive solutions. Well, this, uh, the building sits overlooking the fen. Uh, it's pretty close to the first of the ditches and the ditches go into the lows, the lows go into the rivers. But the history of the landscape, which this building speaks to, is one of some deprivation, actually. You know, it's quite a bleak, uh, harsh landscape. And the way in which people lived in it was in a pretty uh, contingent or expedient manner. There's hardly any buildings that exist uh, from centuries ago and those uh, that still are around are uh, really uh, inexpensive small cottages and uh, we wanted to make a building uh, that also had that uh, quality of expediency of directness of simplicity it's absolutely not pretentious it's a straightforward building and that that is a very strong relationship uh, to the landscape uh, in which it sits So the building sits in the middle, I suppose, of a really small complex of other buildings, um, one of which is John's uh, timber workshop, uh, another is their own uh, house, and in the middle is, is uh, Sonia's uh, studio and pottery. And in between there, there's a number of other spaces where the kilns are. And this building, one of the primary functions for it was as a part of a day that Sonia runs where uh, she fires, they, they uh, glaze uh, pottery and fire it in a, in a, in a raku uh, kiln and then take the pottery into uh, drums of sawdust where fire comes up and makes this beautiful uh, glazed, uh, crackling, crackled glaze on the outside of the pots. And then Ten minutes later, once they have been called, they come into the tea house and alongside uh, Peter, who's a Japanese tea master, they then use the raku pots for the Japanese tea ceremony. I mean, this project was three A3 sheets of paper and was built in a summer. What, you know, how good is that? conservation officer couldn't identify what was valuable about this ruin other than the fact that it was old, maybe 300 years old. So we decided that everything was equally valuable about it and that was a really key driver in the project. We wanted to preserve everything, not just the timber frame which is 
normally what would be considered valuable, but we, but we wanted to preserve the, the lath and plaster, the graffiti, that some of which is old, some of which is new on the plaster surface, even the cobwebs and the, and the ivy we wanted to preserve. One of the reasons it came about was it was a pretty simple solution. You've got an old thing, very expensive to repair. So you just put a new thing over the top of it. That's the theory. Mm -hmm. It's kind of rather a dumb one-liner in many ways. But actually, a dumb one-liner is really, really difficult to do. That's one thing I found out, you know. It's all very well saying that, but it's another thing. It's really expensive and difficult to to follow that through. And it's the following through of the, th the thing which is really important, like most ideas. It's not the idea that's so important, it's the way something is done. There's so much about this project which is, is, is engaging, exciting, uh, spatially interesting, um, rich with narrative that nobody has designed. It's just come about because of the passing of time and weather and events. I mean, that's frustrating as an architect because it's kind of ruling you out of the picture. But I think there are kind of ways that, I think it's really important to appreciate that stuff and to, to enable it. I think it's helped me to want to be a bit more playful in the designs that I'm working on um, and to allow for perhaps a bit more of the ad hoc The, the idea behind the house, in, in a way, came about because I was really interested in using cross-laminated timber, which I hadn't built with before, um, and it felt like this rather tidy thing, this idea that it had been a box factory, the history of the site had been one of making these small wooden boxes for, for perfume and jewellery, and that we could then put another wooden box back on the site felt like quite a neat uh, thing. As when we bought it, it was a very crude building, four brick walls and a tin roof, and we bought it with the intention of making it into our home. And so the idea behind it was to create um, a, a, an open, bright, light set of spaces that gave us uh, a quality of life we couldn't afford on the normal property market in London. Uh, so that was the challenge that we set ourselves and I set myself, was to create a home for us to, to, to really enjoy living in. Yeah. But building the house for ourselves uh, allowed me to keep an eye on the project in a way that I might not be able to do for a client and I was here m multiple times each day and it allowed me to see and understand the construction process in such great detail and really watch paint dry as such um, with uh, each part of the building process. And so it was a fantastic learning curve in terms of um, properly appreciating everything that's involved in the construction process, which I think is invaluable. I mean, the luxury in, in my instance was I didn't have to pay an architect's fee, but with the house you really wanted um, to stretch the money as far as possible and to try and get um, simple, quiet, humble materials to do something beautiful and elegant. But the reality is that most architects work in small practices and within those small practices, most architects work on small projects. Uh, you know, that's, the, that's a huge uh, amount of the work that's done. And it's really, really important because whilst we need to have cultural buildings or education buildings, uh, civic buildings that are the best, uh, across the country, uh, many small changes uh, make a difference to the quality of our overall environment. So, you know, of course it's important that uh, as a profession and the Architects Journal publishing the work uh, celebrates uh, those, you know, many hundreds or thousands of projects that are making a difference. And it's one of those, uh, you know, one of those weeks that we look forward to in the year where there's a representation from a different kind of practice.